Hey everybody, Scott Kelby here from KelbyOne.com. Big news today, of course, Adobe released an update to Lightroom Mobile, my favorite mobile app. Well, my favorite photo app. I, I do like my browser and things. But anyway, uh, if you're a Lightroom mobile user or you're thinking about using it, it got very much better today. This is pretty cool. This is Josh Haftel. Josh is the product manager for Lightroom Mobile. Hey, Scott. Welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Hello, you, everybody out there in TV land. You need to show us uh, something cool. Let's see. What's the, what's the new big thing? Sure. Yeah, well, we've got uh, one big new feature coming out, and that's, uh, as you can see in the interface here, we've got our local adjustments in the bottom right-hand corner of the interface. You've yeah, got a nice little local adjust feature. And so we've got a lot of people asking us, hey, I do these local adjustments on my desktop. Why can't I do it inside of Lightroom Mobile? So we wanted to add that in there. So what we'll see here is if I tap on the local adjustments button, new options come up. The bottom left gives us an option to switch between a linear selection or a radial selection. So this way I can either add in kind of like the linear grad or radial circular grad, uh, however we want to work with that. Um, but just to see how that looks, um, um, we'll just start off with a linear selection. You'll see at the top left, there's a little plus icon. It's filled in. That means that it's ready to add something. So if I just drag on the image, you'll start seeing that I'm bringing in this gradient. And you'll see that that gradient is uh, added in very, very subtly. The, the red overlay will be displayed whenever you don't have any kind of enhancements applied to it. Oh, okay. But if I go in here Amazing. now and I drag this exposure, you'll see that now I've got the exposure in there. And as I start adjusting the, the gradient after that, it's keeping just the exposure. You don't see the red overlay anymore. That way we can be really, really clear about what's being added to my image, how it's being added. And then I can just go in here and add a little bit more. And you can see that if I tap and hold, I can also duplicate it. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to just move around a little bit. Gotcha. Um, but I can also add in another gradient. For example, I'll, I'll drag this time from the bottom up and bring that over. And this time what I want to do is I want to reset the exposure. So I'll just double tap on exposure to set it back to zero again. And I'm going to take this temperature and I'm going to drag it over to the right. And this way I can actually warm up those shadows, and as we know, when we're shooting into the sun, shadows are going to be cooled off. So this gives right. me a chance to be able to like warm up the shadows and be able to control them very directly. And so now, when I've finished with that, I can go back into the edit, and I can play around with some of these other adjustments. So for example, if I wanted to add some contrast into the image, exposure just a little bit, and I wanted to add a little boost of clarity, I can do that, maybe add a little bit of vibrance back into the image. And then just using our famous three finger. Okay, three finger. Three finger before, before, and, before after. and after. This is a very, very uh, fancy, dancy way of doing before and after. <laughs> you just press and hold, and then you can see before and after. And you can see that we've just been able to modify the image really, really quickly using some of these local adjustments. All right. And so, just to be clear, we, we want to make sure that yeah. this is actually these local adjustments are something that's available for uh, folks that are using the full version of Lightroom Mobile. Now, Lightroom Mobile in itself, it's a free application. It's got a lot of features inside of there. Uh, but this is one of those features that's added in only for the the people that are using people the Creative using Cloud. People are using the desktop version. Well, not necessarily just the desktop. We're right. just using the Creative Cloud. Right. Because uh, the Creative Cloud also works with the, the, the Lightroom desktop and Lightroom Web and Lightroom Mobile and right. helps you synchronize your photos throughout the, the whole cloud and make sure that they're backed up online, et cetera, et cetera. But this is one of those features that's only available for the users that are working with that. Now, you can, of course, use it in a trial. There's a 30-day trial available for it. All the other features, for the most part, are available for free. So this is something where we've, we've been adding in more functionality to the application, uh, and so it's something that's uh, really powerful uh, and, and available for lots and lots of folks. All right, that is awesome. It is awesomeness. And I just, is there anything else big? Is there some other big, big, big like kind of historically big thing? Maybe, okay, fine, <laughs> twist my arm, I'll tell you all the fun stuff. Uh, yeah, actually today we also announced the fact that you can now process all of your raw files on your mobile device. Oh. I know, right? So you can actually <laughs> copy files directly from your camera, either using the USB uh, to Lightning or the SD to Lightning card connector kits. You can copy those raw files over and you can work with them full resolution, everything ready to go, get access to all of the advanced math and being able to change white it's balance. It's the real raw. File. Real 100% raw file. So up until now, Lightroom Mobile did allow you to import raw files into your Lightroom desktop and then copy those files over via Lightroom, uh, 
the Creative Cloud synchronization right. technology to put the smart previews down on your device. Exactly. But now what you can do is you can get full resolution, full access directly off your device. And what this is really cool about is it lets you, wherever you are in the world, without access to your laptop, be able to get access to those raw files. Now, you may ask, okay, well, how come I need this, or why would I need this, or how is it going to make my life better? It's a great question, Scott, and I appreciate the fact that you well, asked that. Well, I was that. just going to ask. I know. I, we, we had talked about this before, so I knew what's coming up. Wow, okay. I know. I can read your mind, actually. That's the, that's the great thing. You know, we're, we're, we've got to know each other so well in the last day and a half that <laughs> I can now read your mind. I know exactly I what know. you're going to ask. It's amazing. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> it sure is. Well, I've been reading your magazines for forever, so okay. I, I feel like I know you. <laughs> I feel like I know you very well. Um, well, the thing is that what we've seen uh, today mm -hmm. is that people do want to travel lighter and lighter. So a lot of folks have asked us, hey, I got this iPad Pro. It's really powerful, but it doesn't open up raw files. Well, hey, boom, wango bango, now you can do raw. And with the 12-inch uh, iPad Pro that has the USB 3.0 connectivity, it is fast. It can copy files over to your device, and then you can open them up. But of course, there is that one problem, which is the device doesn't have infinite storage. That's what I was going to say. Yep. My, my iPad, literally, I have five Five gig available. Yep. That's it. Five gig. You know, that's so I can rent one movie for a flight. I, I get it, and I, I've heard lots of people having the same problem. And so one of the things that we've been working through is the conceptually, this is not designed to copy over and back up all of your files. It's not really right. designed around the concept of, hey, I've got this 256 gigabyte SD card or CF card, and I want to back it all up. It's not going to work because how much does an SD card cost these days? 50, 60 oh, bucks, 100 bucks? Yeah, they're, they're uh, cheaper than that. How much does a 128 gigabyte iPad cost? A lot. A, a lot, lot of money. Lot, yeah, a lot, lot of money. Lot. It's so it's really not going to be that solution where you're going to like take all the files off your SD card and put them over here. But what it's going to be really good for is it's going to help you take that one file or that two files or that five or the ten or however many like these really super killer photos that you've just taken. And if you're like me and you just can't wait to share them with your friends, your family, your adoring public, you can take those over, put them on your device, you can edit them, and you can share them right away. And you have the full resolution, the full access, all the quality. I mean, you didn't go out there and spend all that money on that really great camera just to not get access to all the data. And right. now you can get access to all the data. And not only that, but it gets synchronized up to the cloud. And it makes sure that those files go online, you have access to them, and then when you get home, the files are actually going to be waiting for you on your desktop nice. with the edits and ah. any of the ratings and any of the flags that you applied to it. All that stuff is already done. And so if you've used this in the field, and you've made some adjustments, and you've gotten it started, you get back home, it's already there. You can keep on going. You can move step by step and be able to actually take advantage of all those things you've already spent the time working on, and then go farther if you want to. All right, so let me recap. Okay, please um, do. I'm in the field, Yep. and I, I look through my shots, and I see yep. my hero shot. Yep. Or like, this is the one I want to share. Yep. I want to put on Instagram, whatever. Mm -hmm. I use a camera connector card. I, I import the raw photo. Mm -hmm. It's the real raw photo. Yep. Full resolution, yep. a whole deal. I edit it on my phone or on my tablet. Mm -hmm. When I'm done, it's syncing back to Lightroom Desktop. Mm -hmm. It's syncing, if I did it on my phone, it's syncing also to my iPad? No. Mm -hmm. It is? Well, it is. Of course it is. Well, if I guess you're, it would. Yeah, if you've got all your files connected up through, the, you're using the same username and yeah, the password, yeah, right, I am, yeah. it's going to synchronize between all your mobile devices. It's going to synchronize. And we even have an option inside of there. So let's say that you're using an iPhone and an iPad. You know, right. I've got both an iPad Pro and an iPhone. I have my iPhone with me all the time. Like when I'm in the field, I usually will have even in my pocket nowadays, since I've been playing with this application a lot, one of those little connector kits that I can connect my phone up to it. And I'll copy over the raw files onto my phone. I'll edit them and it'll already be synchronizing. And then when I get back to my iPad, if I'm back at the hotel or somewhere right. else, I can have it synchronized down. Now I can tell it to either download the full resolution file or I can tell it to download just a smart preview because if I don't want to wait for the 70 megabyte raw file to come down, I can actually just download a couple megabyte smart preview that still gives me the same access to the raw stuff, similar to what you're used to using in Lightroom desktop connectivity. It gets all access to the raw stuff, it gets access to a lower resolution, and it still lets me work with it a lot faster. And now I can still be able to like see the stuff that I did on my phone, I can see it on my iPad, right. I have access to all those things. How do I know it's a raw photo? Like when I bring it in, is there any, is there a badge? Does it get a, yep. does, it, does it get a color label? <laughs> 
Does it get, what does it, what does it get? <laughs> what does it get so I know it's a raw photo? So there's a couple of things. Like when you're working inside of the uh, application, there will be a little badge that says raw on it. So when you oh, it just says it the up, word raw? It says the word raw. Oh, there you go. And then it'll also show you the file name. So you'll see like it's a .dng, .nef, .cr2, oh, yeah, et cetera, course, et cetera. Yeah. And so you'll be able to see that those are the raw files. It'll even also, we added some information in there so that if you look in the info panel, it'll show you whether or not it's an original file or a smart preview. And so that way you have a little bit more information about oh, okay. where on my using, what am I working with, what kind of resolution can I expect to get out of this? Because there's those individuals that like if you're just going to be transferring your files onto Instagram or Facebook, you don't need a large file. Yeah, but no, no. if you're going to be going through and you're going to say like, well, you know what? I want to work in a full raw mobile workflow. This is something that Russell Preston Brown, Mr. Crazy Genius guy, uh, loves to do. He's been using his iPad only. He's gone full mobile. Four, full bore mobile, unbelievable. And he wants to go into like fix or mix and take the full resolution file and keep on going. And God bless the guy. He is just a maniac, and I love it. And it's great that he can do that stuff, and he can get access to all wait, the resolution. Wait, wait, So you guys got to realize why I'm asking these questions is I'm hearing all this kind of firsthand as well. So, so I can take the raw file into Lightroom, and it will, it will take the raw file to mix, or will it, will it take a... a, a how does it go to mix? So it's going to go to mix with the full resolution, but we don't have like mix doesn't have the ability to open up the raw it files. Have a raw directly. converter, right? So what it'll do is it'll transfer over an internal file format that keeps and maintains the full resolution, right. but it'll do it in a, a JPEG format because. Oh, okay. So you do all the processing. Is it JPEG of the, or a PSD? How does it go over? It's a JPEG. It's JPEG. Okay. Because otherwise you would have this like 80 mega, yeah, yeah, 100, 800 right. yeah, megabyte or whatever bad. thousand I megabyte file. I could never file. download a movie again. Right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So there's some still things like in the in the mobile workflow that you're gonna be. Of course, like we're we're at the beginning phases of this pure mobile workflow, and things are going to be better over time. We're going to see things getting more and more powerful, and as storage space as devices go larger, we saw that right. with the 10-inch iPad Pro, they now have 256 megabyte options. Right. We're seeing that the storage costs are coming down. We're seeing that more things are options and yeah. more possible. It's still pretty expensive. Still pretty expensive. Yeah, because I, I, you really made a great point in, in, in the difference between what an SD card costs today mm -hmm. and what uh, adding. A memory to like an iPad or an iPad Pro. It's, yep. I, I, I'm still using the 64, my yep. 64, and I yep. thought when I bought it, I was like, I'm never gonna run that space. I don't, know, I don't know if I'm gonna <laughs> go to the 64. That's a lot of memory. You oh know? my god! I'm like, I can't. Wish I got the 128. Yeah, I can't do anything but other than 128 these days. But I'm doing so much mobile photography that that's my life. I do mobile photography. I'm the mobile photography product manager. So you are. I just love mobile photography. This is something that it's really exciting to me. I I use my phone all the time. I use my uh, I got a Leica. I got a Fuji that I connect my files over to and constantly taking pictures and I just love the fact that I can be mobile and be around and then be able to share photos and then when I get excited about something I can share it I don't have to wait until I get home no. where the excitement is no longer the, the same thing one of the things we realize if you look at we're in the the snapchat age we're in the Facebook live age we're at these times in which what's the snapchat I know I right but it's like it. The, right, the amount ahead. of time that it takes for a photo to no longer be exciting is like instantaneous. instantaneous right? So we want to be able to hit, hit, hit and get people to share these photos out there. And it's not just for pros. It's for like myself. I'm not a professional. You look at my photos, you'll clearly know I'm not a professional. But I love sharing photos. Being modest. I love sharing photos with my friends and my family. And, and it, it feels more alive. It's like, you know, we live in the DVR age and yet still for some reason everybody wants to watch Game of Thrones when it's on live. And it's, it's there. So we don't want to wait for it. I mean, never seen it. Never seen it. Well, yeah. some people like to see it live. Okay, how you like football? I do love you, football. Do you like watching football live, or do you like watching football on the DVR? I like watching football on the sidelines. There you go. So I, it's pretty live. That's pretty darn it's live. It's extremely live, especially <laughs> if it's coming at you really fast. Yeah. But the point is still like a lot of times people have this psychological like need or value or benefit of like being able to do things instantaneously. And so that's that's one of the great things about being able to have the raw on your desk. Right. Your hey, phone. can you show me what? Let me just see. Let me see what the little badge looks like. Hold on a second. All right. Sure, I can I can do that. Give me one second here. Okay. All right. While he's searching for the badge. Well, it's not going to take long to show you the badge. I can just open up here and let me just scroll over here, find some photos that I know that I've imported as raw, and then we'll see. Boop. All oh, yeah, those raw is. files. Wow. Raw, 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 raw. Yeah, you definitely have a 128 gig there. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and, and just to so be clear, there are new features and functionality inside of this latest version that are available for folks that aren't using the uh, the Creative Cloud. Yeah, give us a couple more. What else okay, you got? Okay, so some other things that we've been doing, like for example, uh, if you're using the iPad version and you want to be able to use keyboard shortcuts, we've added in keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we've heard from a lot of people that are using an iPad Pro with the attached keyboard. Uh, oh yeah, I can see that. And they're also using the, the Bluetooth keyboards and they want to be able to use 
use, uh, the different kinds of shortcuts that they're used to using in other places. They want to be able to quickly go through it. That's something that's available for basically anybody. And we've also added in the ability to add in a copyright on any imported image. So oh, let's nice. say that you're importing images directly from your phone or from a camera that you've connected onto your device, like by copying via Wi-Fi, for example, which is something I do all the time. Uh, you can make sure that anything that's imported, you get a, a copyright added into it. So that way, you know, don't have to worry about people potentially stealing your photos. Awesomeness. Okay, great. Good stuff. Thank you very much for sure. coming. Uh, our congratulations here to your team. Every time it. you guys do something new, it's a very exciting day for us. We're huge Lightroom Mobile, not just users, but also fans and evangelists of it because Thank I think you. it is just, you know, being able to extend the power of what you do on the desktop to your mobile uh, device mm -hmm. and uh, and have the same math and stuff behind it is, yep. is really great. I don't think a lot of people that, that haven't tried Lightroom Mobile realize the power that it has. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it is it's, pretty interesting. We, we um, have used the exact same algorithms, the same mathematics, the same secret sauce that's inside of the Adobe Camera Raw or inside of Lightroom Desktop. Same mathematics are being applied inside of Lightroom Mobile. And that just goes to show how powerful mobile devices are getting. I mean, there was a time in which people couldn't even imagine their devices, their phones that they stick in their pockets being strong enough, powerful enough uh, to be able to apply some of this really, really high quality image processing magic. Yeah. That's in you there. know what's different about this? This is a, this is a professional imaging app, and it's in a mobile device. That's right. that's where I think it really stands apart. Well, guys, thank you, Josh. Thank you very much for being here, and uh, thanks uh, for everybody for watching. And we hope to catch you guys. Go over to Kelby1.com and take our classes because we have a ton of classes. Go take the 10-day free trial. You can watch them right now. We have classes on, of course, Lightroom Mobile, including a class from Josh himself. <laughs> And we've just done a ton of Lightroom stuff. If you're into Lightroom, and I know that you are because you're watching this, you take the 10-day free trial, start watching the classes right now. It's kelby1.com. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks.